Now let's talk more about the standards used specifically for measuring length, time, and mass. Recall that ideal standards are invariable and easily accessible. Nature doesn't tell us which standards are ideal, so it is up to us to choose what standards to use. As we study the history of each standard, you see how physicists learn to define better and better standards over time. Let's start with the standard used to define one meter. Remember, meter is the SI units of length. A meter was originally defined as the distance between two lines on a platinum iridium bar, much like how a ruler works. For historical reason, this distance was intended to be about 10 to the power of minus 7 times the distance from the North Pole to the equator along the meridian line through Paris, but it was off by 0.023%. Not only this standard is not exactly what it intended to be, but this standard is not ideal for at least two more reasons. Firstly, there is only one true standard meter bar. The two meter bars in this picture are only secondary copies of that one and only one true meter bar. Good luck trying to borrow the original meter bar to measure something. In this sense, the standard meter bar was literally inaccessible. Also, the scratch lines on both ends of the meter bar are too thick, making its position too low to meet the needs of modern science. For all these reasons, in 1960, a meter is redefined as 1,650,763.73 wavelengths of a particular orange red light emitted by KR86. Great! But what does that mean? Let's break this definition down and understand it. First of all, KR stands for Krypton, an element in the periodic table, not Superman's home planet. Sorry about that, DC fans. There are 33 types of Krypton, and Krypton-86 is the type that has 36 protons and 50 neutrons. 36 plus 50 is 86, thus the label 86. KR-86 can emit an orange-red light. Lights can be modeled as a wave of electric field and magnetic field, which we'll learn in the next course. That's something cool to look forward to. Anyway, every wave has a wavelength. A wavelength is the distance between two adjacent crests of the wave. The wavelength of this Krypton light is very, very small. That's why it takes about 1.7 millions of them to make up for one meter. Here are the advantages of using this standard. Krypton-86 can be found everywhere, so it is easily accessible. And any two Krypton-86 atoms are practically identical twins, so it is also invariable. Furthermore, these nine digits here in the definition shows us the high precision that the KR86 standard possesses. Using this standard, you can tell the difference between a 0.12345678 meter long bacon from a 0.12345678 meter long bacon. Powerful, right? But alas, eventually even the Krypton 86 standard is not good enough for bacon lovers. I, I mean, physicists. So the meter was redefined again. Today, the meter is officially defined as the distance traveled by light in vacuum during 1 over 299,792,458 of a second. This new definition makes sure that light travels exactly at 299,792,458 meters per second in vacuum. This speed is a fundamental constant. Meaning, physicists have all agreed that this is the exact value of the speed of light in vacuum, not an approximation. In other words, if you go out there and measure the speed of light in vacuum and get a different value, you're wrong. Just a little teaser, the speed of light is the key to traveling into the future, but we shall postpone that discussion until we talk about Einstein's special relativity in lecture 21. I know, always gotta wait forever for the good stuff. This new definition of a meter is better than the Krypton 86 definition because it is simply easier to reproduce. Alright, it's about time to talk about time. The standard of time can be based on any phenomenon that repeats itself regularly. As we know, Earth's rotation about its own axis defines a day and Earth's orbiting the sun defines a year. Interesting timekeeping devices include hourglasses, sundials, Stonehenge, and Hornsby water clock in Sydney. Nowadays, if you're rich and fashionable, you may also invest in a luxury mechanical Swiss watch. But FYI, even the most expensive Swiss watch is typically off by about 3 seconds a day, whereas a cheap quartz watch can be off by less than half a second per day. 
Prices just don't translate well to precision in the world of watches. Okay, so how long is a second? A second was originally defined to be 1 over 86,400 of a day. However, the length of a day is not constant. It can be off by about 3 milliseconds a day. This is of course unacceptable by modern science standards. Today, one second is the duration of 9,192,631,770 periods of the radiation corresponding to the transition between two hyperfine levels of the ground states of cesium-133 atom. Now you're probably thinking the Krypton 86 meter definition actually wasn't too bad. Anyway, let's break this definition down and understand it. CS stands for cesium. Cesium-133 is the type of cesium with 55 protons and 78 neutrons. Here's a simplistic picture of a cesium-133 atom. The red sphere is the nucleus of the atom with all the protons and neutrons, and the green sphere is the valence electron, i.e. the outermost electron. These two big circles are the orbits for the electron. These orbits are also called energy levels. I call them energy level 1 and energy level 2. These two levels represent the, the two hyperfine levels mentioned here. Our electron right now is on energy level 2. It can make the transition to level 1 by releasing some radiation. Just like light, this radiation can be modeled as a wave. So this radiation has a wavelength 2. The time it takes for the radiation to travel a distance of one wavelength is a period. About 9 billions of this period gives us a second. If you combine cesium atoms and laser technology, you can get a monster called atomic fountain clocks. If you put a set of atomic fountain clocks together, their readings will not differ by even one second after running for 300 million years. How long is 300 million years? That's about twice as much time that has passed since the last dinosaurs roamed the earth. <laughs> By the way, the time display on our smartphones when connected to the internet comes directly from the US Naval Observatory, which is home to atomic fountain clocks. The last standard we're going to talk about is the standard of mass. At room temperature, a liter, which is a quarter of a gallon of water, has a mass of about one kilogram. This is no coincidence because that is pretty much how the kilogram was originally defined. The kilogram is also the only SI unit that has a prefix kilo for historical reasons. In 1889, the kilogram was redefined as the mass of a platinum iridium cylinder kept at the International Bureau of Weights and Measures. This definition has survived for a long time, leaving the kilogram the only SI standard whose definition was based on a physical object. Since all the masses we measure are ultimately based on the mass of this one and only one platinum iridium cylinder sitting in France, if you manage to get your hands on this cylinder and change its mass, you literally change the mass of the entire universe. Of course that would have been too easy. One kilogram was finally redefined in 2019 in terms of Planck constant. Planck constant is also a fundamental constant like the speed of light. Physicists have all agreed that this is the value of Planck constant. See the units kg in the expression? That's why the Planck constant can help define the standard kilogram. The exact wording of the definition hasn't come out yet as of this recording. To make this redefinition work, we needed to measure Planck constant very precisely. This was done in Kibo Balance project and Avogadro project. A Kibo Balance basically uses electric force to counterbalance gravitational force on an object to measure its weight very precisely. On the other hand, Avogadro project involves counting the number of atoms in the world's roundest objects. How smooth exactly are these spheres they use in the project? Well, if you blow up one of these spheres to the size of the Earth, the distance between the tallest mountain and the deepest ocean would only be about two stories high. Suffice it to say, even a baby's butts can't be that smooth. This is all we have to say about standards.